Welcome to the Night Club, guys. It's your host, the Night Wrencher. Today, I'm going to be laying down a slab of concrete. This is a little bit different from what I usually do, but I am trying to get the rest of the shop finished uh, getting built. And since I am doing all of this myself without any kind of help, I figure I might as well film it and show me doing this so you guys can basically do the same thing uh, in your shop, your house, whatever. The slab that we're looking at is about 7 feet by 12 feet. I don't have my measuring tape on hand right now, but I will make sure to grab that uh, before I get started. I'm going to be facilitating this whole project using the Harbor Freight Cement Mixer. This is about a $200 item. As you guys can see, I just picked it up from Harbor Freight. I'm going to be testing it out. Um, as some of you guys might know, I do work in construction myself, and we do have an industrial size cement mixer but uh, we have it at the yard and I don't really feel like driving an hour to the yard and then getting it and then keeping it here and then what if the rest of the guys need it and then you know stuff like that so I'm gonna be trying this out hopefully it can keep up but the drum is really really small so I'm not expecting too much out of this little thing I do have 12 bags of Portland uh, cement ready to go I'm pretty sure that should be more than enough for for this right here it's this section right here is only going to be about four inches thick so i'm not too worried about running out of concrete for that so i'm going to go ahead and assemble this and then we're going to see if this thing actually works assembly for this thing was actually fairly consistently easy i didn't struggle at all and basic hand tools were able to get me the results that i wanted although the instructions didn't really help as in, I couldn't really read them because it was like using very specific terms and the broken English from the Chinese manuals don't really help you out. So a lot of it was just kind of like playing by ear. Where does this bolt go? Where does that bolt go? Is this thing too long? Is this thing too short? So it was a little bit of a hassle. But overall, it wasn't difficult in any way, shape, or form. It took about an hour, hour and a half to get it all assembled. And by the end of it, it felt pretty sturdy. But I did, I did realize that the hardware was a little bit too weak or a little bit too loose i mean it's chinese quality so i don't expect anything great coming out of this but if it can last at least a couple jobs to pay for itself that way i don't have to hire anybody i don't have to ask anybody for help to do stuff then it's uh, i in my book i think it's pretty worth it but we have yet to see if i'm going to be able to take advantage of this machine the way i think i'm going to be able to but only time will tell, and hopefully by the end of this, it should be pretty good, but no promises. Okay, I finally put it together. It probably took about an hour, maybe an hour and a half to finally get it all assembled. I just hooked it up to the, uh, to the generator that I have because I don't have power here at the shop. So let's actually see if it turns on. Oh, what? <laughs> it turns on. Nice. All right. Let's start getting to work. The only thing that I'm doing here is actually just getting everything nice and level, cleaning everything up, make sure I'm not going to have any hiccups, try to level it out as best as I can. That way I don't have any kind of like thin spots in the concrete to prevent any kind of cracking or distortion while I'm trying to lay it down, while I'm trying to work on it. This is going to be more of an oil change pad. I'm going to be putting my cards here for when I want to do the oil changes, at least until I get the lift up, which it will probably won't be for a good while. But I do want somewhere where I could actually do my oil changes without having to worry if the concrete has to stay clean or not. Obviously, I'm a little bit of a messy worker, so I don't know how well that's going to turn out for me. Enough C mix for eight yards of concrete, so we'll see.
All right, I had to take a little bit of a break. As you guys can see, I haven't gotten very far, and it's probably been about an hour or two. Uh, I already messed up the uh, the mixer. Let me guys show you. It's running right now, but I have to weld this back, like in an emergency, because this thing broke. And it, since this thing broke, this thing wasn't able to retain the tension on the handle, and it kept popping out. Then I realized this thing was bending and eventually broke. So I went ahead and I, I tack welded it back. I can't even see if I did a good job, but, but I do need to tighten this back up to get it to full tension. Uh, another thing is I've already gone through about three bags of, of uh, concrete cement mix. Uh, this is as far as I've gotten. Uh, it's actually going pretty well because it's so cool right now. It's probably 60 degrees. It's laying out real evenly, so I have plenty of time to go ahead and run it and finish it. I am making it a little bit wet, so it's going to have a little bit of shrinkage, um, which is not terrible as long as you can control it. After all, this is a personal project, so it's not going to be a big deal if there's a little bit of shrinkage. The rest of the project went on pretty seamlessly. I didn't have any issues. It just got a little bit monotonous. I went through wheelbarrow after wheelbarrow after wheelbarrow. I think by the end of it, I went through seven bags of concrete to do the whole thing. We're looking at one and a half yards of concrete. And then I also did a foundation out in the back, which also took another three bags of concrete. And then whatever excess I used, I dumped it in a footing for one of the posts that's going to be holding up the shop when I start tearing down the old post and putting in brand new posts. Overall, this mixture has been a pretty good helping hand throughout the day. Okay, so the time is 7.45. It's been about, since I started, I want to say four or five hours. I probably did the, the actual pouring anywhere from like three and a half to four and a half hours. And then whatever time after that, I've been uh, trying to finish it I did like I said before I did pour it a little bit wet so it is taking a little bit of time to set up before I can actually do the the final and the brush finish it's still coming out pretty grainy but as soon as it uh, sets up a little bit better I'll be able to do a little bit more finish work it's not gonna come out perfect obviously I'm not a cement guy but uh, I'm familiar enough to get it done and it's not for show it's not for any kind of client or anything the next step after this is going to be doing the rooms. This is going to be my engine room for when I set up my LS's and junkyard motors and I'm going to have a bunch of engine stuff here. And then this is where my new studio is going to be. So I'm really excited to get this done. So let's check it out. I'm going to fast forward into the morning so you guys can see the finished product. The recipe that I was using to pour this concrete and I kind of modified it a little bit just because of the way it's set up and also because of the finishes I was getting. Uh, to get the finish that I got on the back, uh, I made it a little bit rich, but I also made it a little bit too wet. So try not to make it too wet because it will leave it a lot more grainier than you want to. Uh, this is a, a learning curve for myself, so it is a little bit uh, something I got to work on. I used 10 shovelfuls of C-Mix slash gravel sand, and then I used three shovelfuls of Portland cement. And for this 8x11, I used about seven bags. And then for the section, uh, the strip of foundation I use in the back, I use about five bags for the whole thing. So you do end up going through a lot of concrete very quickly, but especially if you're by yourself, it usually works itself out. So you need very, very little help, if any at all. Uh, final thoughts on the actual machine. As you guys can see here, I've already had to make a repair on it right here. So this thing actually broke right off, the weld broke right off, and I was in a hurry and I already had cement inside the, uh, I already had concrete inside the little machine, so I, I, I didn't have a chance to actually sand it down, uh, grind it, start welding it, clean it up, so I just really, I just turned on my settings to full and I just tacked it as best as I could. I did the same thing to the other side. Um, and it didn't come out amazing. It didn't come out great, but it got the job done and I was able to finish not only this and But also the foundation out on the side. I think I broke it within the first I don't know 30 minutes or so yeah, But after that it's been running fine Another thing you probably want to do is you want to go ahead and grease this um, This channel right here. This is kind of like a worm clamp style and you can see that the engagement right here isn't the best 
So you want to take uh, stress away from these very cheap Chinese components. You want to go ahead and add a little bit of grease to uh, all of these teeth so you have less wear. Also, these bolts are going to start coming off pretty soon. So if you do assemble it and you feel like you're assembling it for the last time, first and only time, I guess, um, you're going to want to put Loctite on everything. Everything likes to just get really loose. This especially likes to get loose. Yeah, this right here. So I've got to go back in and fix that up as well. Also, if I was going to make this a little bit better, I'd probably make it a little bit taller, add an extension on this side for the legs, and then add an extension for the feet because it's just way too short as soon as you get the wheelbarrow under there. And you got to flip it to pour it onto uh, your wheelbarrow. It only has a one wheelbarrow capacity, so about three quarters of the way up is all you're going to get. But even with just that, it's too short and the wheelbarrow doesn't fit completely under it. So that's always a hassle. You have to kind of hit it at an, at an angle like this. And even then, it, the very end of it will still end up spilling out. So you want to go ahead and modify it. And then you're going to go ahead and uh, make it a little bit taller. The electric motor that was included with this and the belt seemed to be able to handle a pretty good amount of torque. Uh, I didn't feel that the machine was struggling, even when I was overloading it with about 15, 15 shovelfuls and then another three or four of the Portland and uh, significantly more water. Basically, this electric motor is set up to complement the mixer very well, and it mixes and does things very easily. I'm sure if you take care of this, it's probably going to last you a good while. For me, it, it was the perfect helping hand. All I do is shovel, put some water in there, flip it, pour it, and then do it again. With two people, my brother helped me on the second day. Um, it goes by so, so fast, so much faster. But if you're by yourself, this is an excellent machine to just go ahead and just pick one up. If you can get it on a sale day, um, that'd be even better. I got this for like 200 and a little bit. So uh, it, it works out. It pays for itself very, very quickly. And I hope this review helps somebody in the near future. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Night Rancher out.